Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to God's house. For those who are at home watching on live stream or listening via phone tree, welcome into our service today. Um, I'm going to do a quick little bitty announcement. The upper room and daily bread are available at the entrances. If you need one, grab one. Do you want to do the opening prayer? Sure. Let's bow our head for prayer. Oh. Dear most holy and gracious Father, we, your children, are gathered here this morning in honor and respect and love for you. Lord, we offer up this prayer this morning just thanking you for your love, your kindness, your consideration, your grace, and your mercy. And most of all, before we forget, we thank you for forgiving us of our sins of omission and commission. Lord, we're here to honor you. Lift us up. We don't have to invite you in. You are already here in the midst among us. Lord, we ask all this in your, your son, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ's name, and all in attendance said amen. 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 And amen. If you are able, please stand and join me in the call to worship. And our call to worship is Psalm number 13. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over them. Lest my foes rejoice, because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. Our opening hymn, Battle Hymn of the Republic, number 717 in the hymnal and on the screen.
You may be seated. Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And now, folks, on behalf of Trinity Church and the SPRC, I would like to introduce to you our pastor, Reverend Rodney Diggs. You've heard him pray now. He's awesome. I ask that after service today, you come downstairs, extend a handshake, and, and introduce yourself to him. I turn it to Pastor Diggs. Good morning, Roberta. Good morning. Thank you for that. Good morning, Algonac. Trinity United Methodist Church. Let me say this, I always start. The sun is shining, there's plenty of light. A new day has dawned, sunny and bright. Why? Because this is the day the Lord has made and we are gonna rejoice and be glad in it. We are going to rejoice and be glad. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear most heavenly and gracious Father, we, your children, sit here before you in eager anticipation of what this day is bringing to us. Open up our ears, open up our minds, open up our hearts. Let our tongues wag with the anticipation of what you're going to have said and done for us today. We are here. We're open vessels to receive what you have on this new day, at this new time. So Lord, take me, hide me way behind the cross so that your people can hear and see and feel the things of you. We ask all this in the matchless, most marvelous name of your son, our risen savior, Jesus the Christ, and all in attendance said amen. 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 And amen. amen. It's a new day. It's bright and early in the morning. It's, it's 9.38 in the morning. It's a new start, it's a fresh start to a day, to a week. Thank you again, Roberta, for reading the scripture. I, 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 did, a, I did a Tom Brady, I, I switched up to play. I, I, I got another scripture I'm gonna come from today. Thank you for typing up the bulletin, order worship, and I'm sorry I changed up on you, but sometimes these things happen. Coming out of Isaiah 43, the 13th, verse, short verse, and I'm reading pretty much on the Amplified Bible. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it spring forth and you do not perceive and know it, and will you not give heed to it? I will make every way in the wilderness, in the river, in the desert. This is the word of God for the people of God. He said, behold, I am doing a new thing. That was a declarative word that spoken by God and his people in Isaiah 43. He spoke of the faith pass out of the 70-year captivity in the desert, going toward liberation and redemption. God was calling his people out of the old and into the new. He's calling for things that were not thought they were going to happen, but were going to happen. And so as far as God is concerned, it was already a done deal. Behold, it actually means stand in awe of what's going on. Whenever you see behold, something great is coming behind that. Well, maybe not in this case. Something good is coming behind that. Behold, wow. Why did God say this? His announcement was a statement of his character, the Redeemer. In fact, the same breath God was also announcing hope for the humanity through Jesus Christ. 
and the grace of the gospel. Let me put my kickstand down here for a second. I'm a United Methodist pastor, but I'm a Wesleyan. I strongly believe in grace. 99.9% .9 of my sermons will be on grace and about grace. I believe in grace. Amen? So you'll hear that a lot from Pastor Dave. I believe in grace. Today I believe that God is telling his people, behold, I am doing a new thing, giving us a fresh start. I ran track in high school and, and, and for a bit in college, and, and there's a thing where if you ever watch, they get out to the line, and they, they get in the blocks, and they wait, and the gun goes off. Well, if you jump the gun, you got another start. You got a fresh start. You do it twice, they eliminate you. But this is a fresh start for us today. We're in the blocks to run a race for God, amen? He's calling us to come up out of the ordinary and live beyond our limits. I know this is a stretch for a lot of people in Algonac. It's a stretch for your pastor. But we're in this race together. This is not a, run, this is not a race that we run solo. It's a relay. As Pastor Chris and I talked a couple of times, we talked about passing the baton. He passed the baton to me. He ran an excellent leg of the race. Can we say amen? Can we agree on that? I got the baton. I'm hoping I don't drop the baton here in Algonac. He's giving us a fresh start. He asked us to come up with something. He's saying, see and respond. This man of rep reputation goes before him. The purpose of God is to provide in our lives and his church. His church is the bride. We are his bride. We are to behold what he has done, what he is doing, what he's continuing to do righteously, according to the word of God, with the vision to see his kingdom come on earth. What are you expecting God to give you? A fresh start? A fresh day? A fresh beginning? A fresh breath? Breathe in and breathe out. That's a fresh start. That's a fresh breath. That's a newness with each breath is new. I don't take breathing lightly. I don't take anything fresh and new lightly. There's a lot of things that I love that you'll hear about. I love fresh blueberries and fresh strawberries. I like fresh. I like new. Honestly, I like to eat. But that's a sermon for another day, another week. You may seem overwhelmed with stuff when it's new, when it's fresh, it's, it's different. It, it, it's out of the ordinary. Yes, it, it, it throws you off. My pastor friends, when I told them I was coming to Alcadet, they said, is that in the UP? <laughs> They're from Detroit. And anything past Big Beaver, they consider the UP. They said, isn't that just south of Traverse City? <laughs> yes, a uh, couple hundred miles south of Traverse City. Uh, what, what is it near? Do you, do you remember where Selfridge Air Force Base is, was? They said no. And these folks are in their 50s and 60s, Roberta. Somewhat intelligent individuals. I said, Algonac is on the, I said, if you, if you take your hand, like everything in Michigan is the hand, right? I said, take the knuckle. I said, it's right there on the St. Clair River. No, there's not a St. Clair River, there's a, there's a Lake St. Clair. Okay, you went to seminary, so you're smart. Trust me, Algonac is in the Lower Peninsula. That's just a fresh start for me. Madison Heights was wonderful. Algonac is a fresh start. It's a new start. It's a new day. I like new days. I like the morning. I'm a morning person. The carnival last night kind of messed that up because I like to go to... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm an inner city person, so when I hear 
booms and stuff in the middle of the night. Well, at 10.30. I got a little concerned. Then I had to remember where I was. I was, I said, okay, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a celebration that they're doing for me. Thank you, <laughs> Algonac Lions Club, for the parade. Are you working with the, thank you for doing this for me. I mean, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm moved beyond tears. A lot of my pastor friends are jealous. I said, they, they, they got a carnival, they got a pick roll tournament that they're doing just for me. I have no idea what pickerel is, but. Mm -hmm. You're neutral? Okay. Well, thank you. It's a fresh start for you. And I said, they're doing all this because it's 4th of July weekend. I just happened to ease in. They said, where's the person? I just said, person is right next to the church. He said, where's the carnival? Across the street. Just for me. They said, wow, you you're blessed. Until I tried to go to bed about nine. So it kind of threw my clock off a bit. Uh, but are you experiencing the, the fresh start, the new start, the new day that God has given you? When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is pray. I thank God. If I get down on my knees, it's hard for me to get back up. But I sit on the edge of the bed and I pray and I thank God for a brand new day, a brand new start. Yesterday I did what I could do, but today God has given me new breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. That's a fresh start. It's a new beginning. It's giving you a chance, your body a chance to inhale and exhale. I got a couple points. Point one, a bad reputation <laughs> is a hard thing to live with or to live down. The American West was settled in part by people looking for a fresh start. Many of them were men and women in one way or the other had a number of strikes against them that they previously lived in their lives and so they decided to head to a frontier where nobody knew their previous mistakes, sins, or crimes their economic failures, their foolish deeds, and whatever they did. It began again with a clean slate. Someone as far as to take on new names. If they had really messed up and must have done good feeling about something, they had to drag their history with them, but they only knew. They went to, I'm gonna say New Baltimore, but they went to a new city. They didn't go to Fair Haven or New Haven, they came someplace new and they began something short of giving this wilderness a witness protection program, it's really possible to see the same extent today. People go new places, but with our social security number that follows us everywhere, credit history that's nationwide, driver's license, databases, it's hard to get away. With a fresh start, I said, let me go get my driver's license changed. So I pulled my phone out, Googled Secretary of State. There's one in New Baltimore. There's not one in Algonac. So I drove to New Baltimore, found the GPS, and I'm a man. I don't always follow directions. I know, brothers, I don't mean to tell our secrets, but even if I have the GPS, I don't sometimes follow because I know what I'm going in a new city, new city. You, you nod your head, you know what I'm, yeah. I'm driving around and around and around. The Kroger's, it says it's right here. I don't see a Secretary of State sign. I don't see anybody who look like they're Secretary of State. I see nothing. I stop at the gas station. Go to the booth. I said, ma'am, please tell me where Secretary of State's office is. I'm, I'm somewhat lost. She said it's inside Kroger's. But it's a, it's a speed, you gotta have all your paperwork. No, yep, that's not me. Where's the next one? She said, on the other side of 94 on Gratia. Okay, 94 on Gratia, I know. Did the same thing, but I put in my phone. Instead of going this way, I went that way. 
drove a quarter of a mile, turned around, went the right way. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm that kind of person. Drove another 10, 15 minutes, reading the thing, and all this is to get a fresh start. All this is, I'm new, I'm gonna be part of the community. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the right thing now. I'm driving around, and somebody says, it's on your right-hand side. So I'm looking on the right-hand side. I don't see a Secretary of State. I stop again. I hate asking for directions. <laughs> I shouldn't say hate. I strongly disdain having to ask for directions. It just, I, it's a mad thing. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just can't, it helps. <sighs> this is therapeutic. So I asked the next person on the side of the road. They looked at me like, you must be from Mars. You're not from here, are you? No, ma'am. It's back there behind the Outback Longhorn Steakhouse. Thank you, God bless you. Oh, you're a believer. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's good. Well, it's, I'll show you, I'll take you where it is. Follow me in the car. So, oh, thank you. Get there, I don't have an appointment but I'm in the house. I get the new driver's license. I don't have to pay for it. Just gave them my new information, they're gonna send me a new license. But here's the thing, when you're trying to relocate, when you're trying to get a fresh start, you wanna do the right things, but if you don't have it in you to <laughs> do what the instructions say, a la the Bible, you're going to be going willy and nilly here and there and asking people who are going to look at you strangely and say, where, where are you from? Why are you driving around looking for other things? Point two, our past really bites are fresh. Bites are fresh means our past really does have a way of snapping at us and bringing us back to stuff. My past is, I just, I just told you part of it, I don't like to ask for directions. You're thinking, how did he get through school if you don't follow directions? It was difficult. I spent a lot of time in the principal's office in high school because it's hard for me to follow directions. I'll tell you more about my family. I started with my dad, who was like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, 250, 260, wingspan, probably eight feet, because he could slap, I mean, he could reach out and touch me. He said, you have the hardest time just following directions. And I said, yes, sir. I've always been short. So anything he said, I said, yes, sir until he left the room. So just following directions is difficult for me. So I, I can imagine, but you, you like you're much smarter and, and follow directions more. I have a difficult time with it. But that's part of the past. I, I'm trying to do a new thing. God is doing a new thing in me. So I, 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 I determined to do better with directions. Pray for me in that regard. I'm a little older, so it's gonna take me a little time to, to turn things around. But I'm trying to do what God is telling me to do when he says, when my district superintendent came to me and said, I, I got a new appointment for you. I, I want you to move to Algonac. I said, uh, where's that? You got a map? He laughed, he pulled out his phone. I said, oh my goodness. But here's what's happening in our past. We have to kind of move past that. Those things are in our past. I got through all that in, high, in elementary school, junior high school, high school, undergraduate, masters, doctorate. You had to follow directions even closer because you have to write and 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 write. 
and right, and it has to be done a certain way. So, yeah, I had a hard time with that. But a lot happens. You move someplace, you begin getting new friends, you meet new people. I was out Friday at the carnival. Met a couple of folks. They had a band playing, the 50s and the 60s band was playing, and a lot of the songs I knew and was singing along. Folks said, you can sing. I said, no, 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 that's just, that's just the air. There's something else going on. I don't sing. Here's my third point. Sleep, let sleeping dogs lie. Things that happened in the past, let it go. Let it, let it go. For some things, it's better just to let things go and die. There are, there are feuds and arguments that are going on over and over. It's a new day. If someone says something to you 15, 16 days ago, let it go. Somebody cut you off in the parking lot. Yeah, that's one of my things. Somebody cut you off in the parking lot, let it go. It's not that serious. Don't blame every argument. Those of you, I see couples in here, so husbands, don't, don't nod at this one. But if you ever had an argument with your spouse and you knew that you were right and they were wrong, and then you, you argue, you love this person dearly, deeply, tenderly, But they're wrong. Let it go. For happiness and harmony, let it go. Then you realize later that, oh, this hurts, that they might be correct. I can't say right. They can be correct. Let it go. Turn those situations around. Let it go. Let these things that happen, let it go. I wish I had a tape recorder for the things that I have said to people and then I play it back. I've got a sister. I've got four sisters, but my oldest sister lives in Oak Park. And she said, you say some things and you just know that you're right. And one day she puts me on the tape and I said something that was just absolutely crazy to me, to us. She said, but you were wrong. But you don't want to say you're wrong. I said, I, I, might, I might admit I was wrong. There was an incident in Luke. Because see, God didn't really build us with a black box like they have on the planes. With those recorders of things that happen that we record everything that's going on. If we're getting a fresh start, let some things go. Whatever it was, Whoever said something, whoever did something to you, let it go. Because in Luke 7, where there's a woman with a bad reputation, she comes and she falls down and she weeps at the feet of Jesus. It is really helpful to notice that Jesus behaves toward her in a kind and considerate way. He doesn't refer to her as a counselor. He doesn't refer to a counselor to say, I'm to get some 12 steps and, and what needs to be done to explore the root of her problem. He just, he doesn't cross-examine her like an attorney. He just talks to her, console her. He deals with her immediate needs. He said, your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. If someone's done something to you, just say, bless you and go in peace. Because all you really want is to go in peace and to live in peace. Jesus is always dealing with us as repentant sinners. Not just granting forgiveness, but also wiping the slate clean from what we did yesterday. It's a fresh start. It's a new day. Trinity United Methodist Church, it is a new day. We have to deal with our human consequences of mistakes, but it is a new day. God has wiped the slate clean. We have been wrong, we have done wrong, we have been wrong, but God has wiped the slate clean. Because this is truly a fresh start. It is truly a new day. 
Now, here's the biblical pattern. Jesus, in fact, clearly is acting on the practice established by God in the Old Testament. Listen to these verses. Jeremiah 31, 34, God is speaking. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. But I will forgive their inequity and remember their sin no more. I'll give you one more, Jeremiah 50, 20. In those days, and at that time, the Lord said, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah and none shall be fine, for I will pardon the remnants that I have spared. He's sparing us. He's giving us a fresh start. He's giving us a new day to begin and do something new. On this verse that we read today, God is speaking, behold, I am doing a new thing. I'm giving you a fresh start to begin business, to go back to school, to reconnect with lost family members or a friend, or in my case, going to Anytime Fitness and getting in some kind of shape, amen? Are you seeing a pattern here? When we repent from whatever we have done wrong to others or may not remember our past as far as God concerned, we have no reputation to live down. Our sins of the past are not merely forgiven, they are forgotten. Because God has always given us here at Trinity United Methodist Church in Algonac on the lovely St. Clair River, a fresh start. Because he has given us a new day. And my brothers and sisters, I do what every sermon I call wow, words of wisdom. And my wow for today is start each day with Jesus on your mind. The wow, the words of wisdom. Start each day with Jesus on your mind. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Can you give the Lord a hand cup of praise, please, this morning? I didn't say because the Lions are going to win the Super Bowl this year. I didn't say because Michigan will be trouncing Michigan State this year. I say give the Lord a hand cup of praise for what he's done for you in your lives. At this time, there is a sermon. I mean sermon. <laughs> you think? There's a hymn. Here I am, Lord, on page... 596 I'm used to you have screens which is wonderful so oh please stand
Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. We have our offering stewards. I like new stuff because I'm learning. I like to learn, so each church does it a little different. So if I use some vernacular that you're not familiar with, just look at me and say, just kind of smile. dedication of the offering, please just bow your heads. Lord of, of great years, Lord of our solemn tears, God who has yet to bring us so far, we offer up these offerings to you, meager as they might be, but mighty from our hearts and from our souls, we commit this to you, just an offering. Do with it what you need to do, Lord. Lead and guide the hands of those who will touch it, those who will need it. Help us supply this community with what you have for us to do on this corner. Lord, we give this back to you that you gave to us. We say this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Cares course. Hmm? Well, glasses would help. Okay, Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day the daily bread. And forgive us our sins and trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is Independence Day weekend, 4th of July. I am a very patriotic person, so if you could stand. America, my country, tis of thee.
Church announcements? Yes. Please. Because you made something, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yes, you probably do. May I borrow that? Oh, yes. Thank you. Would help if I brought mine with me. Uh, church announcements, please, again, join us after service today downstairs in the fellowship where we will formally and Eat a donut or two. deliciously welcome Pastor Diggs. On Wednesday from 9 to noon is Pastor's Office Hours, um, Friday Food Pantry. Next Sunday we will be holding communion. So, is that right? Because I thought here. Okay, yes. next Sunday is communion. Uh, the sign up sheet downstairs for coffee hour sign up, please check it out. Um, lots of days available for next month. I think there's filled up for this month. So, August 10th through the 12th is the yard sale trail from Sebaween to New Baltimore. We are taking in donations right now, no books. No appliances, no clothing, no shoes. Um, if you want to sign up and help with that, there's also a sign up sheet downstairs on the table. You can talk with Carol Ann, she is heading that. Uh, the community dinners around the corner at uh, First Lutheran is on the third Wednesday of the month at five o'clock in the evening and there's always something good to eat. Again, welcome, Pastor. And God bless America. Oh, yes, on the screen is our birthday. So if you have a birthday in July, happy birthday. Two announcements. I spoke with Marion Friday. She's in St. John's Ascension Morose. Moros. She is doing fair. The doctor says she may be there a couple of days. I tried to call her yesterday to go by and visit her, but I wasn't able to, to contact her. But she did. We talked and prayed, and she was in pretty good spirit. So but please lift her up. I'm a I believe in accessory prayer, strongly believe in accessory prayer. So prayer, pray for her, because uh, I got an opportunity Friday to see and witness the food pantry. I am, I am moved by the food pantry. I am truly moved by the ministry that you good folks are doing. Every church I've been in, there's always, I've always, try to be involved in or been involved in the food pantry, starting a food pantry. This one is very, very nice. And you don't just give the folks what you have, you give them what they ask for. As a pastor, y'all don't, don't know how that, how that touches me. We're giving people what they ask for, not what we think they need. That's a sermon, but I'll leave that on. It's very moving, it's very humbling to come in and, and meet and I talked to Mary and I said, it's a beautiful thing that, you, you, that you're doing, that you started in the food pantry. And it's not just us. I'm big on community. As I understand, we have at least two other churches involved in the food pantry. I like that sense of organization. I like that sense of community, us coming together because we're all in the same race. We're all doing the same thing. We're all serving God's people, amen? Y'all know it's how I like to say amen. 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 The other announcement is next week, we're doing communion. I implore you, come. I do communion differently every first Sunday of the quarter. This will be the first Sunday I'm here. There will be a different, unique, thought-provoking communion. 9.30 next Sunday here on the corner of Smith and Washington. Thank you.
Anything else in terms of announcements? That's it. A benediction? Come on. Once again, let's bow our heads, lower our eyes. Oh, how excellent you are, our God, in all your ways and all that you do and all that you have done. You have given us a fresh start, a new day, a new wind, a new breath to run the race that you have put us in to go and do your work. Now, as we get up from here, leave from this place, never departing from your sight, your touch, your voice. Let us now go do the work that you have assigned us to do. And all in attendance said, amen. 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 And amen. amen. The hymn go forth of God's by God's blessing. Mm -hmm.